Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and today we are covering a huge amount. Again, an extremely busy week at Boca Chica with Starship development. After the success of the SN2 test tank, the SN3 Starship is already underway. More disappointing news about Boeing Starliner, the issues with that orbital test flight keep on coming up to the surface. On the flip side, Blue Origin again dumped some new surprise footage on us this week. The last Cargo Dragon version 1 is now docked to the station for the very last time after the incredible CRS-20 launch, and to top all of that off, SpaceX's next Starlink mission is about to launch. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. SpaceX has had another incredible week with Starship development. The Starship SN2 test tank had passed all the important pressure tests last week. This test tank was rapidly developed to test an issue that occurred with the SN1 version structure which exploded unexpectedly. This was all due to the architecture issues with the thrust puck structure placed within the lower bulkhead of the larger oxygen tank. If you would like to know more about that I have a video up here popping up in the top right but let's just say for now that this this certainly didn't go to plan. Immediately the next week the smaller SN2 test tank was created to test out that thrust puck structure. A water pressure test was completed first, followed by the test the next day using liquid nitrogen. Thanks to Boca Chica Girl with NASA Spaceflight for capturing all of this amazing footage as always. So yes, the SN2 survived the cryogenic pressure test late Sunday with Elon Musk tweeting quite soon after saying SN2 with thrust puck passed the cryo pressure and engine thrust load test late last night. This is wonderful news as there was some real concern that this test tank may have also failed to hold the needed pressure. We were of course super interested to know what the next steps would be now that these tests were successful. Because this test vessel didn't have the liquid methane tank on it and because this top bulkhead was attached upside down compared to the regular full tank stack, we were assuming this would be the end of the SN2 tank's useful life. Elon quickly answered this question shortly after as well saying the plan is for a static fire and short flights with the next SN3 Starship vessel then longer flights with SN4. More interestingly he added that spooling up the whole Starship Raptor production line is really what matters and from the work going on around the site this certainly does appear to be a huge priority indeed. The site is a beehive of activity, so much has been occurring just this week with the site itself. More foundations are being laid here ready for another new structure to go up, we're assuming that there will be another of the tent structures kicking off here quite soon. I just can't get enough of the footage of the concrete smoothers screaming around here. That footage just totally cracks me up. And indeed, thumbs up for the concrete smoothers. Also the high base structure here is very near complete now which still has certainly not stopped SpaceX from utilizing it as it is being constructed. Loads of new ring segments are being produced now faster than ever it seems and there is already some preliminary components being stacked for the SN3 Starship. The pace of development with this entire complex is just crazy. Now there are a lot of people that are much more familiar with slow paced intricate development such as what we see with other rocket manufacturers and they see this rushed prototyping as as careless or even irresponsible, but I don't think they're really understanding Elon's strategy behind the development of Starship. Sure, it looks quick and sometimes dirty, but this is the genius behind the rapid prototyping strategy. The stainless steel material is cheap compared to almost any other comparable material. The equipment needed from a relative point of view is very affordable and rapid to deploy. Because these prototypes are constructed and tested to failure, SpaceX are not afraid to try new things to see what works and what doesn't, and to innovate the most simple solution to a problem. Have they met Elon's incredibly optimistic timelines around the Starship presentation last year where Elon predicted the first flight to be only months away? No, but just keep in mind that this was only six months ago. Since then, there have been a bunch more prototypes produced and a great deal has been learned. If this was any other developer of such technology, years can drift by without as much news and progress as we've seen over the last few months with SpaceX. The iterations will not stop with SN3, SN4 or SN5. More will fail but soon the first flight and landing will take place of the Starship. Soon after that the full super heavy booster will be constructed and flown. 
All those right now saying it is impossible for this to fly are likely those same people that said that landing in an orbital class rocket was impossible. Producing profitable electric vehicles was impossible. Just remember, it is only impossible until someone does it. What we are seeing here is SpaceX creating the machine to make the machine. As mentioned by Eric Berger in this amazing article, workers at the site are doing three 12-hour days followed by four days off, then another four 12-hour shifts with three days off. This way, with four Four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX is also throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. So this is why the entire complex is continually running at this rate. At this pace, the ultimate goal of Mars colonization may not be as far away as many people think. As soon as we can lower the cost of mass to orbit dramatically with the fully reusable Starship and Super Heavy stack, this is going to change everything. In less positive news, just recently NASA announced that it had finally finished the investigation into the Starliner mission flown late December last year. For those that don't know about this vehicle, Boeing's Starliner capsule is SpaceX's main competition in terms of crew transport capability to the International Space Station. Both Boeing and SpaceX were contracted within NASA's commercial crew program to create vehicles to deliver crew from America to and from the International Space Station. Now, as many people have already heard, that first orbital uncrewed test flight of the Starliner had multiple failures that required an abort of the main mission. Luckily the vehicle returned to land safely in the New Mexico desert using its parachutes a few days later. Now because of the issues with this mission, an independent joint NASA and Boeing review team was formed to investigate and report on the various failures that occurred. They were asked to review three issues including two software related problems and also the unexpected loss of space to ground communication capability. Ability. Now, as stated by NASA's announcement here, during that investigation, the independent team had identified technical and organizational issues related to Boeing's work. Along with that, NASA alone has reviewed its role in the flight test and identified several areas where they themselves can improve the level of participation and involvement into Boeing's processes. At this point, NASA has stated in the article that more work will be required to decide whether Boeing Starliner will need to perform another uncrewed test flight prior to a crewed mission. I suspect this is largely a political statement at this point and that they would certainly be required to do another test flight, but we'll need to see about that as it occurs. The real news here though is that the Starliner mishap is now classified as a close call and the review team has identified 61 actions to address the two software problems. This includes a full review and corrections for the coding for the elapsed timer and service module disposable burn. They need to improve their software testing and also increase the fidelity in the testing of its software during all phases of the flight as well as having better simulations and enough data to adequately uncover issues. Now to me, this was one of the biggest eye openers to this report. We can assume from this that there was a lot of missing data from the logs that have really limited what can be determined from the mission. Obviously if the information is not available, it's impossible to determine where the issues may have occurred, so vastly better logs and diagnostic information will be needed it seems. Boeing will also need to check software coding as hardware design changes are undertaken which seems to suggest that perhaps they were not following such a strict process previously. So after these requests Boeing has accepted the full list of recommendations and it's now in the process of rectifying all the issues found. Not only that but the joint review team will also be tracking the progress for each list item specified. Now all of that was just in relation to the two software problems. The unexpected loss of space to ground communication issue is still under investigation. The main course has already been identified as radio interference, but the full report and recommendations will be ongoing for quite a while longer as far as we know. Finally, the review team had specified organizational problems that have contributed to the whole set of problems. To remedy this, Boeing is creating plans to improve those internal processes and testing procedures in the future. So yes, Boeing sure does have work cut out for it in the foreseeable future. It's presumably going to be quite some time before we see crew anywhere near the Starliner. Now last week we witnessed the launch of the very last Cargo Dragon vessel with the CRS-20 mission along with the 50th successful booster landing by SpaceX. Since then of course the Dragon has continued its mission uneventfully which met up with the International Space Station on the 9th of March. It was captured and berthed using the station's robotic arm for the very last time. There will be no more flights of this version 1 of the Dragon as we've seen with all previous missions to the space station by SpaceX. All missions have been completely successful with the 
exception of the one CRS-7 mission which was lost in 2015. Considering the rapid development of the Falcon 9 over the last decade, this is a huge accomplishment. 19 out of 20 successful missions with this amazing vehicle. This should be SpaceX's last uncrewed cargo mission for around six months with the next resupply mission for CRS-21 being the very first to be using the new Cargo Dragon 2 vehicle which is different in a number of ways. This version of the Dragon is essentially going to be a variant of the Crew Dragon vehicle currently scheduled in for the first crewed flight no earlier than May. The Cargo Dragon version 2 will not have the same deployable solar arrays we've seen with the Dragon version 1. Solar cells are now actually placed on the trunk instead which simplifies the design. This version will also not need to be berthed with the space station with the robotic arm. Just like we witnessed with Crew Dragon's Demo 1 mission last year, the new Crew Dragon vehicle will dock to the space station autonomously. This was the Dragon's third visit to the station which again demonstrates the effectiveness of reusing vehicles multiple times to make these missions not only more affordable to complete but also much more sustainable. A huge congratulations to SpaceX and all the partners involved in these missions over the last eight years. This is a huge milestone. For me this seems to be quite literally the end of an era with a brand new age coming right around the corner. We all certainly hope to see even more success with the next set of commercial resupply missions coming up with the Dragon version. 2. Now if you would like to know a little more about the Dragon version 2 vehicle or the upcoming Demo 2 mission, I have a more in-depth video for you here. And of course while you're here please do consider subscribing, there is loads of news coming up with Starship, Starlink and Crew Dragon and I'd love to share all that with you. Now another Blue Origin video released this week giving us an update on the BE3U engine development which will be used for New Glenn's upper stage. This engine is actually a variation of the engine used on the new Shepard vehicle but of course it will be optimised to operate in the vacuum of space using a very large engine bell to ensure the exhaust expansion is optimal at that altitude. This footage here gives us a rare view of some test footage in West Texas. There will be two of these engines on the upper stage and they each offer around 160,000 pounds of thrust or just over 710 kilonewtons. Just to compare, SpaceX's Merlin vacuum engine produces around 934 kilonewtons. So with two of these BE3U engines added together, the total thrust there will be around that 1420 kilonewton mark or roughly one and a half Merlin vacuum engines. Along with all this, video dropped showing an incredible new mission control center recently completed. This is a beautiful modern space field with massive monitors at each control station and what look to be server racks mounted into the desks as legs. Is that what they are? I'm not sure. Let me know what you think it is in the comments. There isn't a lot of information to go along with this video, but by the looks of this incredible setup with a huge screen at the front here, the team at Blue Origin will have all the equipment needed to launch that new Glenn rocket. Now they just need the rocket to go with this fairing and they'll be all good to go. So yes, more interesting video there from Blue Origin. Please do share more because we would love to see this progress here. As I mentioned last week, these new videos are the first we've seen in regards to the development of the new Glenn rocket in a very long time. So thank you for sharing these. The fact that we're now seeing a lot of this footage all of a sudden makes me wonder what else may be released over the next weeks or months. The Starlink launch is just about to occur shortly as well, but first, just quickly, a huge thank you here to my amazing patrons. You are all quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much bigger and more meaningful. If you like what I do and you would love to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included exclusive roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron-only content, and you can also have your name listed right here like these other incredible people. You are all quite literally changing my world here. Thank you very much for your support. Of course, not everyone can donate in this way, but regardless, you simply watching and interacting with these videos matters. Your subscriptions matter. And by watching and supporting this channel and discussing these topics with family and friends, you are helping to educate those around you to everything here going on. You are helping to drive the global passion to make all these dreams of colonizing other worlds a reality. And I sincerely appreciate 
appreciate every minute you spend here on this channel. So yes, Starlink 5 is due to fly on Sunday March 15th from Launch Complex 39A to deliver another 60 Starlink satellites. This one is going to break the record for the number of first stage booster flights. This booster designated B1048 has already flown four times before. This is the first fifth flight of an orbital class booster and it will be attempting that landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You just under 630 kilometers downrange. The fairing recovery ships go Miss Tree and Go Miss Chief will at this stage be out to attempt the catch of both fairings. Speaking of that, the fairings have also previously been flown before on the Starlink launch from May of 2019. So yes, I can't wait to see this launch. We are getting closer and closer to a network that can be utilized. I'm planning on live streaming that with my awesome patrons, so looking forward to that one. Now a quick shout out to everyone that loves space simulations and games. Obviously this channel in the past has had quite a large focus around such entertainment. Now the developers at Jundaroo have very recently released a major update for the game Simple Rockets 2 that includes the most highly requested feature since its first release, Astronauts. Well actually I believe they're called Space Sailors in the game but this adds a whole new level that hasn't been there before. This is quite a powerful simulation too allowing very high customization of your vehicle designs without the need for many mods. The performance of it is incredible too but what I really love is that you can use the inbuilt visual programming language to automate your flights and there are loads of examples of players creating automated launches and landing programs with these systems. What I really appreciate though is that the developers make Simple Rockets 2 totally free for educators. It's a great way to learn how to code and also have fun learning some rocket science at the same time. A big thank you to Jundru for creating a game here which inspires and educates. I'm a real fan of this game as you can see from my channel history. And this is not a sponsored message in any way, just to be clear, I just really love this stuff. If you would like to check that out, head to simplerockets.com and pick up a copy for PC or even mobile devices. Finally, a massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today we have my video last week covering the explosion of the SN1 Starship in detail and the events leading up to that. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.